Good morning and welcome back. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm doing a glue book, but it's going to be a little bit different because you guys know me. I'm all about breaking rules. Anyway, um, so I ran across this video. You know how like in YouTube, it kind of like posts videos that are random, but kind of sort of have something to do with your like view log or whatever. Anyway, I ran across this video and as soon as I saw it, I wrote it down um her information i don't have a link for you because i don't think i'm subscribed to her um but her name is carol tenson that's the name of the channel um and the video was from october 8th 2020 and the timestamp where she brings this idea out is at nine minutes and 10 seconds anyway it's a glue book but instead of putting a bunch of random stuff in it you put a bunch of random napkins in it and you only glue on one side so that whenever you're looking to make some cards or, you know, whatever, you just come through and you tear out the page and poof, you have, um, I've already started this, which is why some of the pages are glued together. Anyway, um, so I'll fix that in a minute. So anyway, you just come through and you tear them out. Now, um... I had planned on this being some sort of cover, which is why it's on both front and back. But as you can see, it's still kind of wet because I, like a ding dong, started doing this and forgot to turn the camera on. Oops. So anyway, um, I'm just going to continue. I have a box here full of um, ready to go napkins. I also have some where I have kept some of the back pieces that, you know how like sometimes whenever you pull it off, pull the napkin off it has like a negative or like a bleed through it bleeds through I've kept some of those I don't know if I'm going to use them because I don't know if it's going to show up prominently or not um so I figured I would just go with what I've got and I've got a couple napkins where um I was using them last year so I'm just gonna go and take this here and it's not going to be any rhyme or reason except for try to measure and try to get the space of the page because I really only want to get one I mean I can do collage bits when it's um, like once I get down to having scraps I can do collage bits but I don't really need to do that right now this is watered down Mod Podge in this container here this is my brush that I've had been sitting in water ignore that black there that is um, from what is that from I don't know my water container it's got some like I think it's from paint actually when I washed out my brush uh, brushes so anyway I've also got my parchment paper sheets right beside me ready to go because it's basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these down and flip the page So this is just another form of gluing without really thinking about anything because the thinking comes later on after, you know, everything's all um, glued together. Let's move my phone out of the way. So take this and take this. And some of them like this one, it, it obviously is a little bit darker. So you're not going to be able to see the background as much, but I'm just making sure that it goes over without sealing to the other side because it can seal on the parchment paper all at once because it's not going to stay. All right. So now we've got another piece here. And like I said, this is just another form of 
don't think about it. Just grab your scraps and start gluing stuff to pages. Um, I happened to grab a music book because I have a ton of the, well, I actually don't have a ton of them. I got rid of a lot of them last year. Um, but I did have a ton of them. Now I have a mediocre, reasonable amount. I think I've got like maybe three or four. And that might be a ton for some people. Guess it just depends on your perspective. Well, that's kind of the world and reality. You know, a good portion of reality is perspective. Because your truth might be the different from my truth because our realities are different because our perspectives are different. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So anyway, that one's done. Grab another parchment paper here. And flip page. And hopefully my, my son's friends don't come baiting on the door again. I've already done this video once. <laughs> Um, and then I deleted it and started again. Um, it wasn't the cover. I didn't do the cover. Um, that was me going, whoops, I didn't mean to start this without turning the camera on. Oopsie. You know, I think I'm going to pull this because it does overlap a little bit. And I think, um... I, need, I do need to change direction a little bit because I don't want it to get too bulky, which I don't think it will. We are playing with napkins here, but the layer of glue does add a little bit too. I saw a video once where uh, the lady was talking about how um, putting too much glue on her paper caused her journal to be bulky. And I was like, you know, I never thought about that, but she's absolutely right. And I'm putting a lot of glue right now. I have to be careful though. I stole my husband's sweatshirt. I was cold. Um, and I stole it basically because I could. You know how long it's been since I've been able to wear my husband's clothes? My husband's not a, like, he's not a super tiny man. Um, but he's not a big man either. Like his waist is a 34, 35, something like that. Um, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of kids on my front porch. Scared the crap out of me. All I know is if they start beating on my door, I'm going to have issues. Because if I have to redo this video again, y'all will never have seen this video. But. Then again, at this point, I might just have to piece them together. If they start beating on the I don't think they'll beat on the door. He's got respectable friends. I mean, they're not too bad. You know what you could also do is you could also. Um, ooh. That's an idea. Uh, sorry, I just thought about something, um, which probably wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay, so I have this product. It's um, Poly Stains or Patty Stains. Uh, stains by Patty Pockets is what it is. And um, oh, it looks like there's something on the bottom. Yeah, I think there's something on the bottom of this. Anyway. Um, I was going to say that, I don't know what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Oh, you could stay in the page. And I was going to say that it might, um, be something that you can do with the glue. Uh, cause I think, I think there's glue in it. And the reason that I say that is because, um, I used a brush and, Cause I didn't, I don't, I didn't know what it was. I just assumed that it was just stain, you know, like normal, like wood stain. Um, but I went, I had to throw the brush away cause it was rock hard. Um, like I couldn't get the, the thing in my bobber out. So I was like, well, that's thanks. But I can use like paper towels and silicone, stuff like that. I mean, you never know things until, well, you do. So but anyway, I think there's glue in it. 
And if that's the case, then I can definitely stain this while it's still wet. It's not going to hurt anything. And it might look really cool. Oh, I wonder what would happen if I put that stain in my Mod Podge. Hey, that's an idea. It's a pretty interesting idea, actually. Stain our Mod Podge. Um... There's a film or something in the bottom of this. I'm not sure what it is, but I can see it. And as I'm shaking it to pieces, it's like it's pulling it off. I'm not sure what it is. Here's a rag. We'll use that. Uh, maybe I should spritz it first. Just so it's not super dry and then it rips my paper. There we go. Wee. I guess I could probably, yeah, you can see that it's like see trying to seal the lid to the container. That's funny. All right. So let's grab this. Bloop. I don't think you're supposed to use that much, but I don't think you're supposed to put it on wet either. But that's okay. Because it'll have, it'll actually seal this. It's really, really neat. I'll have to show you guys this. But it'll, that's another reason why I think there's glue in it. Because it will seal the pro uh, project that you put it on. Um, it'll give it like another texture than the original you know, whatever it is. All right, so we're just going to close that up. And then we're going to turn the page. All right. Oh, and it's sticky. That's another thing, is it's sticky. All I know is I don't care what's in it. That stuff is amazing, you know, for the record. Um, I have no idea what it is, but it is awesome sauce. So what was I talking about before I started staining stuff? I don't remember. But, um, I was talking about how I was wearing my husband's sweatshirt. That was like a, wow, that's a thing. I used to be able to wear his clothes when I was younger. A hundred pounds lighter, too. Like, seriously, I was a hundred pounds lighter when I met him. Um, I was actually only two sizes smaller, which I don't understand, like, how this is working. Um, so when I first met him, I was 20 years old, and I was a size 14, which I'm a size 16, 15, 16 now. Like there are some 15s that I can wear. Anyway, um, but I only weighed like 148 pounds, 170 pounds or something like that. So I wasn't quite 100 pounds lighter because I'm only 230 now. Because I was, I started at 270. Um, and I know a lot of people just probably gasp like, oh, you're talking about your weight. I do talk about my weight. I also talk about my age. I talk about my mental health. I talk about all kinds of stuff that are taboo. Um, because if we don't talk about it, then we feel alone. And I'm tired of feeling like I'm alone in this world with my issues. So I'm... I've just, I've been like that ever since I started the YouTube channel. I've been very open with who I am 
and my mental illnesses illnesses yes i said that right um and you know i'm not afraid to talk about who i am as a person just because i have a form of bipolar doesn't make me a bad person just because i have severe anxiety doesn't make me a bad person now if i choose not to do anything about it i mean it doesn't make me a bad person it just makes me not very smart in my decision making because i've met plenty of people that you know have bipolar or anxiety and whether or not they can take medications is irrelevant because i cannot take a me medication for anxiety it'll kill me um but i have low blood pressure um but managing it doesn't mean taking medication i know that that's like the common thing that people think about immediately it's like oh you have you have bipolar well for one i don't have bipolar i have a form of bipolar um it, it's not the same my mother my mother has bipolar um she has to be medicated there is no ifs ands buts about it she absolutely has to be medicated and when she's not her behavior is very different than well what it should be we'll just leave it at that um and that is the case with bipolar that's not the case with my mother that's the case with bipolar that is the nature of the disease now if you choose not to get that treatment that's you know that's your choice that's on you um but it will and i'm speaking from experience it will make your life much more difficult with the people that are trying to care about you. Um, but it is still to each their own. You know, I don't take medication for my depression. Actually, I'm not supposed to. I do. Um, I am in cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Um, I have taken um, CBT for the better part of seven years. No, when did I get diagnosed? I was how old was I? I have no idea, but I know that I I know that I lived in New York because that's when I was diagnosed. So, um, It was, I don't know, gosh, we've been here for almost two years. Um, we were in Washington for four years and we were in New York for three years. And I got diagnosed the year before or the year that we moved to Washington. So I'd say probably about five or six years ago, probably more than that, but whatever. Anyway, I was diagnosed then with severe anxiety and, um, the disease itself is called cyclothymotic disorder. <clears throat> Excuse me. The disease itself is called cyclothymotic disorder. And basically what that means is I have the same lows that a bipolar has, but my highs are very different. So whereas a bipolar, their highs, they kind of lose their sense of right and wrong. They lose their sense of normality, um, morality, um, it's really all about me, 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 and um, just whatever makes them happy at the time. That's it. That's the only thing that matters. Nothing else matters, and that's their highs. Uh, with cyclothymatic disorder, ours are a little bit different. So we don't lose that sense of right and wrong. We do get a sense of um, euphoria, and we do get really hyper. <laughs> Like you should, oh my gosh, if any of you guys lived with me, you'd probably be like, okay, enough already. Uh, because I will rearrange the house. That's what I do because I get really hyper and I have to do something with that energy. So I start rearranging the house. Um, I completely rearranged and organized our entire house. We live in a four bedroom, three bath. It's over 2000 square foot home. I completely rearranged and organized the entire thing with the exception of my craft room 
and my storage room, which is for those that don't know is my guest bathroom. It's what my husband calls my storage closet. Anyway, completely rearranged the whole thing in a week. And that was without his help primarily. Um, and when did we do that? We did that. I did that when basically he came back and um, from the ENT, he had had, um, he had had an allergy test done and they were like, he's allergic to dust mites. I was like, all right, duly noted. <laughs> Let's get rid of all the dust mites. So I deep cleaned the entire house, reorganized, moved everything around. Like it was pretty crazy. So anyway, I get a lot of energy. So sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me. So sometimes um, <clears throat> you guys might notice that I start talking a lot. Uh, not a lot. I always talk a lot. That's not, that's not a new thing. But sometimes you guys might notice me talking faster. And that is, that's just an extra little boost of energy that I get because of the cyclothymatic disorder. Put it this way. If anybody has ever met anyone who has ADHD, that's, that's me. That's how I act. I do not have ADHD. I have the symptoms of ADHD, but I don't have actual ADHD. So I go like super hyper, 90 to nothing. If you've ever talked on the phone with me, then you know I change the subject like every two minutes. Um, and that is a gross overestimation of just how often I do change the subject. Like it's a little crazy. Um, but, uh, and I lose my train of thought a lot too. Um, but anyway, um, I think I'm going to swap napkins. I want to do some of these pieces that I have like. Because uh, I don't know how much time we got left. Now I'm getting warm because I'm like going pretty quickly. All right, let's do this one. And then we'll do that one over there. Wait, did I do it that way? Eh, this way works too. Do it like that. Um, so anyway, I also have severe social anxiety, which I know it seems really weird for a YouTuber to have a social anxiety, but it's really, really different to talk to a computer screen even if you're FaceTiming someone or talking on the phone through Facebook Messenger or whatever, it's a lot different talking to someone electronically versus talking to someone in real life, person to person right in front of you. Because electronically, if I don't want to talk to you, I just click a button and it goes away. But in real life, there's no button to click that, you know, makes me disappear or go away or you know, makes you go away or, you know, whatever it is that you're feeling at the time. Cause anybody who has social anxiety knows that sometimes you just want to go away. You don't want to be involved with people. You just want to shut down and do your own thing and not have to answer to anyone. That's me. Um, I believe that my social anxiety was created. I don't think that I have it predispositioned. It's not something that is in my family. No one else in my family has it, or at least not that they're, they've spoken to me about. Uh, my dad definitely does not have it. My dad, my dad talks a lot. That's where I get it from, <laughs> honestly. Um, and, um, i put that right up there. I just want to fill this space up. So anyway, um, I know enough about my mother uh, because I've studied psychology and because um, when I was younger, she would talk to me about things like that. Um, like when I was still a child, as I got to be an adult, it became something very different. 
um, because I have a mind of my own. I don't need someone to tell me that I'm right or wrong. I can make that choice on my own. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, um, so I don't believe that the social anxiety came from a predisposition. I believe that it was created and it was created by me having such an incredibly low image of myself. Like I had no self-worth at all, none. And it wasn't until, actually it wasn't until this past year, 2020. And I started a new program uh, called Noom. And it basically, it, I started it so I could lose weight. That's, that was the whole purpose for me starting this program because I went on a walk one day with my kids. And after about two minutes, I was like, <gasps> I'm dead. Um, so I was like, nope, something's got to give. We need to change. So I started this program weighed in the very first time I weighed in, I was 270 pounds and I about died. I had a heart attack. I was so ashamed, so embarrassed. And then after doing the program for so long, and I hadn't even done the program for so long, like it, here it is January. And I only just started in uh, September of 2020. So October, November, December. So January, four months. I've done it for four months and I've lost almost 40 pounds, which is yay. I am very proud of myself for that. But more importantly, I have gained who I am as a person. I don't need recognition from people. I don't need acknowledgement from people. That was a big, big one that I needed to have as, you know, as a pre noom a pre noomer if you will. I needed to have recognition. I needed people to say, well, specific people. I needed specific people to say, I'm proud of you. I love you. You can do no wrong. You're my family. But now as, you know, as a numer, that's what they call them. I don't need that. I mean, is it nice? Absolutely. It is absolutely the best thing, man, to hear that your loved one is proud of you and that no matter what you do, they will love you unconditionally. Their, their love for you is not conditioned upon your actions or what you do for them. Is that important? Sure. Is it needed? Nope. And it took me a long time to realize that because I needed that. I needed that validation. I needed that, that, you know, I love you from my family. And for those of you who know my family, no, I'm not talking about my husband. My husband is the most wonderful person. Um, he is amazing. Um, let's go with, oh, this one's pretty. This is a nice blue one. Um, but anyway, so I talk about all kinds of stuff on this channel. If you haven't figured that out already. I mean, especially if I'm doing stuff that I don't have to think about. I mean, <laughs> uh, then I get real deep in conversation. I don't even realize what started this whole thing. I really don't. But anyway, I've been doing Noom and I love it. It is amazing. Um, I think the best part of the Noom journey is the fact that it has taught me more than just, oops, sorry, babe. It has taught me more than just how to lose weight because it actually doesn't teach you how to lose weight. It teaches you how to be okay in your own body. It teaches you how to think for yourself. It teaches you how to live in a society where people are constantly telling you what to do and what not to do. It teaches you how to be who you are, regardless of what other people think you should be. And it teaches you how to be okay with who you are. 
And that is why I love this program. That is why this program is amazing. And I honestly believe that that is why I've succeeded at this program. I have tried other weight loss um, programs in the past. And I have, I've, I've been to counseling before in my life. Like I've been to counseling for the past, like, oh, I don't know how many years once I was diagnosed with depression. Um, the anxiety was the big thing that forced me into um, uh, therapy, though, because the anxiety, for those of you who don't know anything about anxiety, basically, you have a part of your brain that reacts to reality as if the reaction is reality. And um, the problem with that is, is that whereas the anxiety might stem from reality, the anxiety attack in and of itself is most often not reality. Um, and so it does make things very difficult, especially when you're trying to, I don't know, live a life. Um, but, okay, these are really cool. I don't think any of them are dry yet, but I'm just kind of flipping through them. We've done a lot. Like, that's kind of crazy. Okay. So anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. I put glue on his sweatshirt. I hope he doesn't mind. Okay. I need to use these napkins before I tear up anymore. So, but yeah, I talk about all kinds of stuff, especially if I'm like not thinking and just gluing stuff. You're welcome. So this one's probably going to be a much longer video then, huh? I wonder how long it'll take me to get through this whole book. I don't know. But how many of you have been ashamed because you ate something and someone gave you a dirty look as if you shouldn't be eating that because you're a little heavier than, you know, society has deemed it necessary for you to be? How many of you have decided not to eat at all for a few days to try to lose some weight and come to find out you actually end up gaining weight back because that's not what your body is needing, but instead that is what your mind is telling you because that's what society has told you. That's what society has taught you. Society has taught you that beautiful is what your eye sees. Society has taught you that you know, different is not okay. People, it, it's funny, I read something um, once that it was, uh, they were actually speaking to my daughter, my oldest daughter. And um, it was just like, you know, make sure that, you know, you are drawing conclusions based off of your own opinions. And I've heard people say things like that all the time, my whole life. And whereas, yes, that statement in and of itself is a true and accurate thing to tell people, it's not very true or accurate when it's followed by as long as your opinion matches mine, because then it just defeats the whole purpose. Now, if you're going to tell someone to be true to themselves, then mean it and let them be true to themselves. You can't justify or you can't judge people for being true to themselves only if it aligns with your own opinion on things, because then you just kind of feed into the problem. Um, and that, like I said, that's from personal experience has absolutely zero to do with YouTube. No one I know from YouTube has ever spoken to my daughter that I, that I realize or that I don't know about. And if you've spoken to my oldest daughter, then, um, you are more than likely, um, a close friend or, you know, someone that I have spoken to or whatever. So obviously I'm not talking about you, um, and it was a post on Facebook that this was. They didn't actually speak to my daughter. Um, I don't let just anybody talk to my kids. And yes, my daughter, my oldest daughter is an adult. Um, but she is also very smart. And she doesn't just willy-nilly 
you know, talk to people because even she commented to me privately that, you know, it was, it was weird because she's also heard that a lot in her life and it's not always as true as when I say it, because when I say it, I mean it. I mean, be true to yourself. If you disagree with me, that's okay. Because I'm not always right. I might be right for me, but that doesn't mean I'm right for you. You know, it's funny is most of my family and most of my really close friends actually don't agree with my viewpoints on politics, religion, money, stuff like that. They actually don't agree with it. I think the only person that agrees with me politically out of my family is my dad, I think. But we don't really talk a lot about politics because he really knows politics. I, I don't. I don't know politics. I know... I know what society lets us know. That's really it. I don't know anything about politics. Um, most of the people that I do talk to and most of the people that I'm very close with um, have different viewpoints than I do, which I actually find intriguing because I want to know what the difference is. I want to know why do you think like that? Why is it that you feel this way or that way or whatever? Like, what is it about this situation that has made you feel that way? I legitimately want to know why people have the opinions that they have, not so I can change their mind and make them see my way, because that is not learning. That is very closed minded. But yeah, I've been going all kinds of weird conversations today huh man y'all y'all got an earful today <laughs> my bad um but yeah that's just kind of what happens when i'm like not really thinking about any one particular thing at once i'm literally just i've got this box over here with my parchment paper uh which is why i'm able to grab a sheet after sheet after sheet. Give me two seconds and I'll show you what it is. I got it from Amazon. I don't remember the price. Um, oh my gosh. We're not even halfway through this book. So this might be a... We're going to work on this at another time. I'll get halfway through it and then we'll close shop and we'll work on the other half at another time. So halfway through it is right here. So we've got two more pages and then that is halfway. Okay. Um, so anyway, I think the moral of this story or talky or babbling or, you know, whatever it is you want to call it. I think the moral is just be happy with who you are and don't let other people change your minds. If you know that you're a good person, then be a good person. You don't need validation or justification to say, you know what, I want a chocolate, you know, I want to, I want to eat a brownie. I eat brownies. I've lost 40 pounds in two months. I eat brownies. Yep. I eat cookies on my desk right now. There are three candy bars. There's a jar full of caramels and oh, I already ate all my chips. I do have special chips that I do like very much, but um, there is candy, there's, uh, chocolate, there's snacks normally until I eat them all and then I have to fill them back up. Um, I like this a lot. I think I'm going to layer this. It's kind of like watercolory. Put one there. So anyway, don't let people tell you what you should and shouldn't eat because they think that they know what's best for your body. You know what's best for your body. Listen to your own body. Listen to your own mind. No one knows best what's for your body except for you. No one. And that, my dear, is something that I did learn through Noom. Yep, yep. They teach you to listen to your body. 
They teach you to stop listening to people that know. And I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah, this works. Okay. So anyway, they, I'm just trying to use up the scraps here. And this actually works out really well because it's like watercolory. Um, cause I have one page left and two little scraps of napkins. So I think that'll work. Okay. Now this page is going to be a little bit thicker, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and put that on the side. I don't think it's going to hurt anything to have a little bit on that side. All right. My husband's in there making dinner right now. He's making salmon cakes and scallops for dinner. We eat a lot of white meat now. Um, we still have red meat. But white meat is a little bit less than calories. And I do try to watch my calories. Even though I eat chocolate. Even though I eat sugars and candies and caramels and stuff like that. I do so in moderation. Because moderation is the key. I'm not going to sit there and eat a bag of Doritos. But will I munch on you know, four or five Doritos. Sure. I like Doritos. It's all about moderation. Instead of taking, I have glue on my the back of my wrist. That felt really weird. So instead of taking the entire bag of popcorn that I just popped for, you know, everyone, instead of eating the entire bag of popcorn myself, which I would do, or instead of sharing the bag of popcorn with my youngest daughter or even my oldest daughter or my son or sharing it with anybody, I will simply just grab a bowl and pour a cup of popcorn in the bowl and have that. That's it. And I still like the, you know, the good stuff, the, the movie theater popcorn, because I mean, let's be honest, that stuff is amazing. Um, and it's not good for you. Like, well, it's fine as long as you don't eat, like, the whole bag every day. Then it's not so hot. But what people don't realize is your body actually needs fat. Your body needs sugars. Your body needs carbohydrates. Your body needs these things. So stop telling people to not eat them. <laughs> Like your body needs protein and carbohydrates and fat. Like fat was the biggest thing that I was like, wow, really? That is so interesting. Because, yep, your body needs that stuff to function properly. And if your body's not functioning properly, you will know it. You'll be tired all the time. Because let, let me tell you something, over the holidays, I didn't gain any weight, but I didn't lose any weight either because I was eating, I was not eating good proportions. And I, I, you know, I had to deal with those consequences myself. Let's do it this way instead. All this time I could have just done it this way and then flipped it over. Wow. I am smart. <laughs> All right. Cool beans. All right. So I'm going to leave it open there. Anyway, I'm going to put that over there. We used a good bit of that Mod Podge. I'm going to have to fill that back up before we do the other half. So moral of the story is be who you are and love who you are. Don't let other people change the way you feel about yourself because you are a good person. You just need to realize it. Anyway, that is it for this nice deep conversation of mine. And I will, interesting, I will catch you guys all in the next video. Bye guys.